Chef James McGinnis. I'm the executive chef at a local restaurant in town. I've worked there for over 15 years. And one thing I love doing is showing people how to cook. So today, with you, we're gonna make a nice filet mignon. I'm gonna have this for my lunch when we're done. I feel like having potatoes with it. And I was cleaning out the fridge looking for vegetables, but all I could find was frozen cauliflower. So that's what we're gonna utilize today. Other ingredients that I'm gonna be using, we got a little bit of oil, butter, chopped garlic, garlic powder, pepper, thyme, rosemary, and sea salt. Now, just because I'm a big fancy chef doesn't mean I always have fresh stuff at home because I'm at work five days a week eating there. Also, what else does it mean? It means that I know you don't always have the best stuff at home either. And who says everything has to be fresh? There's nothing wrong with frozen vegetables in your freezer if that's the only way you're going to get vegetables. So here, we like to use a variety of things to try and mimic what you might have at home. We'll start off by dicing our potatoes. Um, I like to use my shintako, a Japanese-style chef's knife, for small tasks like this. Dice them evenly and small so that they cook well with the Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you're enjoying this, please do me a favor. It won't cost you anything. All you have to do is click that like button, hit the subscribe button as well too, and you'll make sure you get notifications from me next time I make a video. So after we get the potatoes all diced up nice and even, we're going to start seasoning up our steak. So I have the steak on a little small plastic cutting board that easily fits in the dishwasher. Uh, that way I'm not having to, uh, you know, do a, like a bleach or a disinfection on my nice wooden cutting board as much. I like to use little cutting boards like this just to help keep things clean. Um, make sure you season the steak on both sides. Whatever seasoning you're going to use might, uh, might be different than me. But I'm just putting sea salt, uh, pepper, garlic powder, and thyme on my steak. And I'm making sure I give it a good rub around. You can see that my left hand there, the hand that I'm using to rub the steak around, is only touching the steak. Uh, for some of you, uh, not spreading bacteria around is very important. And some of you could care less about a little raw steak here and there. So that's how we are going to move that around. So after that jump cut you just saw, I did go wash my hands and I'm preparing my compound butter next. I'm putting the same seasonings, like I put some thyme, some garlic powder, we'll add some salt and pepper into the garlic butter. Not garlic, well yeah, I guess it is garlic butter with the garlic seasoning. Now one thing you're not really going to see is what I do with the cauliflower. I just took the frozen cauliflower and I put it into a bowl of warm water to soften it. So you want to mix everything up in your uh, compound butter nice and evenly. And that way it'll help distribute it when you uh, put it into the frying pan. So I like to start with a little bit of oil. We get our filet on. You can see a little bit of steam or smoke coming off and we get a crust. Uh, after about two minutes, I was flipping at two minute intervals. Uh, then I took it off to rest, so it's been on for four minutes, two on each side. I throw the potatoes in, and now they've got a little bit of that steak flavor in the pan. The potatoes are in there. It was a little hot to touch. I'm going to grab a rag, turn the heat down a bit because we're no longer searing the steak, and keep mixing it up. So you want to get everything browned, and you definitely don't want to burn anything at this point. So I, after I got everything browned, then I transferred it into the oven where I finished it off. I cooked it for another eight or nine minutes. And then when I pull it out, I was, I was happy with how cooked the potatoes were. I turned the heat back on and then I threw in my cauliflower. I just sprinkled it in there and I'm adding my compound butter. And what I'll do is I'll just keep basting the steak with that butter. So I just chopped it up a bit with the spoon there to help it melt faster instead of one big clump. And we're going to come in with that spoon and we're just going to start basting it as soon as we get some melted butter. See, there we go. 
And that is basically all we're going to do. We're just going to keep keeping things moist. The idea here is to get the butter melted and get a nice little butter glaze on top of the steak. You want to control your heat. You don't want to smoke, make a lot of smoke. You don't want to make any smoke because that means you're burning it. Uh, if your butter goes a little brown, that's fine. That's called a bonne noisette. Uh, what you can do to stop butter from browning, where if you're happy with its look, is hit it with a little lemon juice. That'll freeze it in place. And that was basically everything that we did with the steak. I have nothing else to add, except how did it taste? Well, there you have it. We just made a very simple, no fuss, quick meal you can make for yourself right after work before you want to go do anything. My total time on this was about 25 minutes and I didn't do any fancy grocery shopping. I took the filet out of my freezer. I grabbed the vegetables out of the freezer. I got the potato out of the cupboard and I cooked it up nice and simple. The important part is to use a good technique to help distribute good flavors everywhere, like with that compound butter. On that bite of potato, I'm getting the richness of the butter, I'm getting some salt and pepper, I'm getting that thyme and the rosemary. And with the steak, All right, so I just took a giant piece without cutting it up, so that took a minute to swallow. But with the steak, I'm getting a nice tenderness because it is a filet mignon. Uh, I'm getting that taste of butter from adding that compound butter. I'm getting all the herbs and spices. So if you enjoyed watching this video get made, go out to the store, get yourself a steak. It doesn't have to be a filet. If it's a thinner steak, you can always adjust your cooking time. If you like it more cooked, leave it in the oven longer. If you like it less cooked, skip the oven if you want altogether. Just give it a good quick sear. I like to do it all in one pan like this because I only have one pan to wash now and one little bowl from making my butter. All right, well, until I make another video, thanks for popping by my kitchen, and I'll see you next time.